Hey, what's up team? This is Eddie Gray. Welcome to Resources for the Modern Creative. Today I want to talk about repurposing tracks for music licensing. So let's say perhaps you wrote a song for an artist or you yourself are an artist and you want to use old music from your hard drives, old laptops, and, and, and you still want to monetize. There's, there's, you still feel like the song has potential, but maybe it needs a, a facelift. Maybe it just needs a bit of a modern edge. And so I want to go ahead and tell you the way that I like to approach repurposing tracks for music licensing. So number one, I like to remove any memorable moments or themes that happen in that song. I often like to change the arrangement around a little bit, and I'll give you an example here in a sec. Number two, I'll keep the rhythm section, and then I'll change the BPM or change the key. On top of that, if I keep, or when I keep the rhythm section, I change the bass line, and I'll even change the bass sound, because I don't want sound technology to recognize it. So if you change the key, you change the BPM, you're changing various sounds, you could now get outside of the sound recognition technology. Number four, something else that's going to help with that is you can add a new melody with a new sound. You add all these new elements, of course, it's going to sound like an entirely different song altogether. Number five, change BPM and key, which I already alluded to. And then number six, add new and odd elements. Now, why would you want to do this all together? Well, let's say you already put in a bunch of work and your drums are hitting hard. You already have a really great basis for a trap song or a tension song or something. Why would you spend all that time making the most basic of decisions like how to EQ and filter out uh, a kick if you already have done it once? Now, of course, you can create templates and that's okay too, but I find that templates can be uh, rather stale after a while. And so the next move, I think, is either channel strips or patches, and those you can save inside of the library by going and save. And then, of course, you can save here in the channel strip settings as well. And then we can talk about the difference between those two later. If you want to see that video, hit me in the chat and we'll talk about that. But that being said, let's go ahead and listen to the original. So I'm going to go ahead and play you the original song that was written, and it's right here. Okay, so that right be there would be the most interesting or catchy part of that song. So I really liked the song's drums. It's so one of my strengths is producing drums and rhythm section. Uh, originally, I started off as an acoustic guitar player. So when you play acoustic, you're always thinking about the bass and the rhythm. And so that being said, um, I want to go over this list and just see how I put this new track together, okay? So I'm gonna play the first bit here just so you can listen to it. Bear in mind that I start out with a pad. So there's, I've already introduced a new element into the song. Here, check it out. Okay, so you can hear that I removed the original melody, which was the the biggest obstruction, and, and also the bass. I thought the bass really made up the, the meat and potatoes of the song. So if I remove those two elements, all of a sudden, we've got something different altogether. I kept the drums, so that takes care of these two. And I changed the bass. Listen to the bass here. So 
So let's compare that to the original. And they sound like two entirely different songs altogether. The drums are all pretty much the same. I may have added some processing, but generally speaking, they're all right there. Now, something else that I did was I added a new melody. My melody is right here. And I'm super proud of this one because I took this from a machine. So I've got a machine set up here, and I plug in directly into my interface, and I recorded this really just fun sounding melodic line. Check it out. So, you know, it just sounds kind of quirky, but with the beat, it sounds hard. Check it out. Again, I change the BPM. You can also change the key, and then that can get you halfway there. And then the last thing is to add odd elements you know, the, the melody being one, but then just other sounds. When you first hear the song, you hear a pad, which you didn't hear before. There are other elements that I have here that are really interesting as well. For example, I started beatboxing. Here, check this out. So this is done inside of Quick Sampler. All right, so here it is right here. And so if I play that, it sounds like this. So that's the original. If you want your beatbox or sample to conform to the project tempo, you want to hit the flex and follow feature here. And then now this will line up with your current BPM. So not only am I just adding, you know, things that are a bit outside the box, uh, but I'm also just adding, you know, quirky sounds as well. Here, listen to this tongue snare and so all of this stuff puts together really puts the song out in left field check it out There were other elements added as well. Here's a breath that I used as a quasi shaker. Check it out. So that's just me breathing a la the Beatles. They were huge on that kind of stuff. And then here's just a, a pluck with some effects by Serum. Uh, the Serum effects are some of my favorite. I just love how clean they are. They actually remind me of Ableton effects, which I really like a lot. Here, check this out. So I added these little plucks in there to just add to the, uh, you know, to the kind of futuristic, uh, fun, symbolic sound. Just kind of it felt right here. Check it out. Okay, and then on top of that, I started doing things that were different from the other song. So one of my big things when I mix is creating contrast, separation, uh, creating dynamics and movement. And so what I did was I selected the entire part of this section here, and then I just bounced it to audio. So I just hit Control B. And so what happens is these are muted, and I have a track, which is track 64, and you can see that I inserted a ladder filter on that. Uh, uh, big ups to Brandon Adams who introduced me to this. I love this filter now. I'm absolutely stoked about how, how clean and lush it sounds when you're filtering, uh, especially a song. So here, check this out. Okay, cool. And then the last thing I did here, which I, you know, was pretty stoked about, was track 61. Um, I used Serato, and and you know, the truth is, is I made this song 
when 10.5 came out for Logic. And so I was just trying to see what the difference was, pros and cons of using Serato Sample and a Quick Sampler. They have some different feature sets, but you know something that I really like about Serato Sample is that I can take the, the uh, loop, which in this case, it's this one here. Actually, the original sounds like this. But then from that, I can create a keyboard set so that now I'm just using that one sample and playing a sound from that or creating a sample from that. Here, check this out. I'm going to solo this. So it's taking the loop that I originally used, which is called Loops Angel Arp 2. Great loop by uh, Initial Audio. Check them out. Best hip hop loops and samples in the game. And then from here, I just played the part in, you know, and it, and it just, I loved it. It sounded like an accordion. It just sounded like a really tripped out uh, patch. And so I used it here. Check it out in the context of the track. Okay, all right. Well, hey, thank you for watching. If you like the content, go ahead, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And look, we're here to serve you guys. We're here to help you get your music productions to the next level. I know this isn't going to work for every single track. Okay, I get that. But if you can make two or three or four tracks out of one, why not repurpose tracks for music licensing so you can move a bit faster and so you can get ahead? All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Stay up.